Obviously, listen to MMA Odds Breaker this week. We got Chris Weidman on the other end of the line. Getting rid of headline UFC 168 here in Las Vegas. Uh, Chris, do you think it's wise to give your game plan out to Anderson Silva so early before the fight starts? Was it wise for me to do my game plan? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I read a a little bit ago that uh, I'm coming forward. If you put your hands on, I'm punching you in the face. You put your hands up, I'm going to punch you in the face and take you down. (laughs) I'm just going to stay, keep the pressure uh, on you and stay in your I face. Think it's, uh, I think it's just who I am. I think um, I've never hidden my game plan. My game plan is the same every single play. It's uh, walk across the cage and, and deceive that guy. If he thinks I'm going to punch him, I'm going to take him down. If I think if he thinks I'm going to take him down, I'm going to punch him or kick him. So it's pretty much, uh, that's, that's you know, I'm not one of these guys who who's going to Come with the game plan. All right, first round I'm gonna jab. Second round I'm gonna second. Second round, you know, hopefully he's gonna be tired. I'm gonna get my takedown. Third round I'll take the takedown right hand. I'm, <laughs> I know some guys do that. That's just not my style. My style is a nonstop pressure, mentally and physically break my opponent by pressure and uh, and and being mentally, you know, uh, outsmart them. Is that that's kind of the way that you were? Early in your career, too. Obviously, Ring of Combat, you went through and destroyed everybody in Ring of Combat. But even when you first got the, to the UFC, you were you were replacing injured fighters all the time on short notice, and you were crushing them as you were coming through. The first, I mean, obviously, the first time you went in, you won a unanimous decision. But then after that, you're basically just beating everybody up, finishing everyone that you, that you stepped in front of. I mean, it's 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 been pretty pretty cool to watch a wrestler not only have submissions, not only have takedowns, but also now with the last time you fought Silva, you have knockout power that is is the end of the punch knockout power. God is running away from you. Mm-hmm. I feel like that you're not getting... The, I, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You finish, I'm sorry. No, I, I feel like that you're not getting the credit that you're due because everyone's touting, oh, is Anderson Silva screwing around, dropping his hands, and that's how Weidman caught him. But you didn't get hit in any of the exchanges before that. You were beating him. You were outmastering the master in stand-up. Yeah, uh, you know, I agree. And uh, that's why this fight, this second fight is going to be exciting. There's, there's so many arguments going back and forth, whether it was a fluke or whether I'm better than him. And all those arguments, there's no reason to argue. December 28th, the answers will be solved. And everybody will know the reality of the situation. And to be honest, the reality of the situation, people are going to think I'm crazy, is that I face him in a boxing match, I'm beating him. I face him in a kickboxing match, I'm beating him. But my wrestling match against him will be a lot uh the, like the, the kickboxing matches will be a lot closer than my wrestling matches with them, so that's where that's that's my main my my main uh, advantage over him is my wrestling and my jiu-jitsu. But I'm not I'm not afraid to stand with him at all, and I think I would be him in a boxing match or a kickboxing match. But again, this all sounds this sounds, sounds a little crazy to everybody, and <clears throat> that's what makes it exciting. For December 28th, I have a lot to a lot to prove again, and I'm excited to go out there and do it. Uh, <clears throat> In my last fight, I, you know, I had a year layoff. I was coming out, out of two surgeries. I was, I was rusty. You know, I was, I felt, I felt sluggish. I wasn't the best athlete I could be. This fight, I feel like I'm on a completely different level, and uh, I'm just, I'm very confident in all areas. Well, let's not forget the two surgeries plus Hurricane Sandy came through, destroyed your house. You spent more time helping the rest of the rest of, of Long Island get rebuilt. Like you went out there and, and helped, uh, helped everyone rebuild their, their houses. So it wasn't just two surgeries and trying to recover physically. You mentally were, were in another place too, because it was so bad for you um, from the devastation. Did that, did that actually help you take a break away from the sport and reanalyze, you know, what was important in your life as far as everything and not just being that, that professional athlete, like some guys, that's all they are is just athletes and they can't do anything else. Uh, I guess, you know, it's crazy. I've been fighting for, I, I, my first fight was 2009. Uh, I've had like two and a half years of my, so what, what was that, four years I've been fighting? Almost yeah. five? Yeah. And uh, for those for those four years, two, two and a half of those years were with injuries and not training. So I've really only been fighting for about two years, you know, and, and training consistently. <clears throat> and I just feel like I'm improving a lot and, um, and, you know, having those breaks is good, but it's not. Like, the difference between me and, and, and this camp compared to my last camp is just two, two, two totally different animals. You know, I have professional boxers just coming down and undefeated professional boxers, you know, good ones, uh, Golden Glove champions. And they won't come back unless I wear 20 ounce gloves. I'm like, 20 ounce gloves? I don't freaking have 20 ounce gloves. And then they bring the 20 ounce gloves. 
So I just, I just feel like, and, and, and other guys who came in for my last camp that are feeling me now, I'm just, I'm just like, my weight is way down compared to, I'm just in such better shape. Just, you know, just having that time off last year, I just put weight on. I, you know, it was harder to come off. I was worried about my shoulder the whole camp. We had to, we had to work around it. I'm just, uh, you know, I just, I give myself no excuses to lose last fight, but and, and uh, but there were there were things I could have that were worked into my head uh, where I could have made a, a way out for me, but I refused to do that. And uh, this time, there's really just nothing. There's literally no excuses for me to lose this fight. For those at home that don't know, Chris Weidman talking about twenty ounce gloves in boxing. Most times you spar with sixteen ounce gloves because that's enough padding when you're sparring with other professional boxers. Most guys wear eight ounce gloves when they're in the actual fight. A guy asking you to wear 20-ounce gloves literally means that he's feeling your knuckles through a 16-ounce glove, which is you're basically wearing pillows at that point. Now you've got two yeah. pillows on your hands. Like, how could you even punch a guy? 20 ounces they is a brought, heat. They brought 20-ounce gloves, and they were wet 20-ounce gloves. So they had to be, like, 24-ounce oh. gloves. And I, I was telling them, like, I know big, like, heavyweights, you know, <clears throat> those fall 18-ounce gloves. And I, was, and I was going, I was like, you know, I'll do 18-ounce gloves if you want. But they were very, very, uh... Uh, sure on the fact that they want me to wear 20 ounce gloves. Who are the, who are the oh, professional well. boxers you brought in for this camp? What's that? Who were the professional boxers you brought in for this camp? I we have three different professional boxers, and I can't tell you one of them any of them means to be honest with you. Oh, okay. I don't I don't know if you're trying <laughs> to be secretive. Or you just all, didn't know. They're all they're all New York guys. <laughs> okay. Uh, old New York guys. Um, the two guys, uh, two of them were undefeated. One guy is a uh, like a journeyman. Type guy, uh, and then um, <clears throat> we have a bunch of kickboxers as well, you know, for all the kicks and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and and then we have uh, Wonder Boy, I'll tell you my demo guys that we are. So guys, the only person we flew in for this camp was uh, Wonder Boy Thompson. Oh. Other, okay. other than that, we had all all the kickboxers and, and boxers just in the New York area. We just you know, throw them a hundred bucks and they come in, and that's really it. Uh, last question, Chris, before I get you out of here. I know you got a busy day today. Christmas in Las Vegas. Is your whole family coming? Yep, my whole family's coming. Uh, I'm going to be out in Vegas like on a Sunday before. Okay. Uh, so it's the 22nd, and then Wednesday's Christmas. My family's flying in on Christmas. And so I'll see them on Christmas, but it's not going to be. It's not going to be the Christmas I imagine. You know, I just bought a new house and got the Christmas tree set up here, and I got a three-year-old daughter and a one-year-old boy, and there's nothing more I'd like to for them to wake up and run downstairs and have a Christmas present from the tree in my our new house, but it'll, it'll be worth it after our, uh, after after the fight, December twenty eighth, and and then also we're going on we're going to like celebrate our Christmas out in uh, Turks and Caicos. Oh, my wife said that up, so I don't know where that is, but so we're going out there. Good, good. You take, the whole family's going out there. It's great. I actually have a couple of friends that just came back from there, and it's outstanding. They like it. Yeah, they loved it. They took their whole families. They're they're doctors and and. Uh, it was a. Uh, they went with a couple other families all together, and they brought all their kids, and it was amazing. They said they had the best time. It's uh, you will enjoy it for sure. You will have a great time out there and be able to relax. And, and sure. for you, the kids will be running around the beach and playing in the water, and that's all that you really want to see anyway. So you'll be fine. Exactly. <laughs> all right, Chris. Well, I'll see you when you come in town. Uh, have fun. Good luck with the rest of your rest of your camp. See you in a couple of weeks, buddy. Thank you, man. Take care. Take care.